It's been a while since I've made a coding video. I haven't told you guys this, but the reason is because my last coding video depleted so much of my brain cells that I took a whole year just to recover. I mean, look at this. How do you even code that? Like the only way to code that is by sacrificing your hairline plus half of your sanity. So that's right, for the past year, I've been meditating in the rainforests of Bhutan to allow my brain cells to regenerate. And the videos in between are actually not me. They are AI deepfakes that I bought from some guy on 4chan to make sure I had some videos prepared in advance. God, those deepfakes cost me my left kidney. I've definitely not broken even with the ad revenue. Yeah, that was a mistake. Anyways, I've started coding a bit again recently, trying to learn some machine learning stuff. You know, out of my intrinsic passion for computer science, obviously, and definitely not some other reason. But here's the thing. Everyone starts off with digit recognition when they do machine learning, but that's kind of boring for a YouTube video. Like, this is what it would look like. Hey, 90% accuracy. So we all know how a video about that would end up. So we compute the partial derivative for the weights and biases starting at the loss function and then using the chain rule to backpropagate through the hidden layer. Hey, are you still listening? Huh? Stop falling asleep, this is important. Gonna backpropagate the gradient. Yeah, not very interesting. So I thought, you know, why not make an AI that interacts with a game-like environment where it flies around or something? Iron Man. I cared you'd actually be here. So let's just jump into it. Of course, we gotta start by finding a good Iron Man model. And here's one on Sketchfab by XX Boom XX. It is 142,000 triangles. My computer's gonna explode. Uh, it's, it's all good, I got a plan. Look, we open Blender, right? And we use a tool called Decimate. What this tool does is it basically Thanos snaps triangles out of existence on any 3D model, you know, to save everyone's computers. So, uh, check this out. Look at the number of triangles over there, and... Haha, perfectly balanced as all things should be. Let's check out the effect. Oh dear. Anyways, now we can start working on the ragdoll in Unity. We just attach some joints and collision and rigid bodies and uh, oh, uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, that, that, that's not it either. Ooh, oh, what's going on? I really should have researched how to do this, huh? Oh, uh, okay, I think we got it, we got it. Let's see how it, damn, it got moves. And then now we add propellers to its arms and legs so that it can fly. Okay, now let me explain how this AI is gonna work. So in machine learning, there's three main types. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is when you give the neural network labeled data, like pictures of digits, along with what that digit actually is. Then when the network sees enough examples with the correct answer attached, it learns to be able to find the correct answer itself for an unknown example that doesn't have an attached label. Now, unsupervised learning is when you give the network a bunch of data that doesn't have labels and you're like, okay, don't worry about figuring out what each thing actually is, just group the ones that look similar together. And then once you do that, we can get a human to manually label the whole group at once. But for video games and stuff, we need to use the third type, which is reinforcement learning, which is where an agent, in this case, the Iron Man, learns what actions to take in an environment. There is no label or correct answer like supervised learning in this case. I cannot show the AI how to fly around because I don't know how to control it. I got dropped on the head as a child and now I have a 0.6 KD in Fortnite. You think I have the dexterity to control four limbs in eight different directions to fly perfectly? No shot. So reinforcement learning is kind of like telling the network, look, I don't know how to do the thing, but you try to do the thing and if you succeed, I'll give you a reward of like $5. So basically like a father that failed at life and pushes his kid way too hard in an attempt to live out his dreams through his child. That got depressing. Now, reinforcement learning comes in a lot of different flavors. Just look at this whole classification chart, like god damn. But for purposes like what we're trying to do, it's generally agreed upon that PPO or proximal policy optimization is the best one. Now, I'm not gonna explain PPO because Look at all these equations. You guys want to sit through me explaining all these equations? I thought not. So yeah, I'm going to skip the explanation for the viewer's sake. Huh? And definitely not because like, I don't understand it either. What a dumb idea. To use PPO, we can just use an ancient technique known colloquially as other people's code. Like Unity. Unity provides PPO, so thanks Unity. Okay, one last thing we need to cover before training the AI. I know I'm dragging this out pretty long, but I promise this is important. 
we need to first get the inputs right. What do I mean by that? Well, a neural network basically takes an input of a bunch of numbers and it gives an output of a bunch of numbers. The numbers that we're gonna give the network are here. I've listed 33 of them, but we're only gonna use the first 27. Notice how we're not using Euler angles, which is the typical, you know, degrees around each axis type of rotation. This is because Euler angles are fine until you reach a full revolution of 360 degrees, and then it suddenly resets back to zero degrees. This means it's discontinuous, and the neural network is gonna freak out when you give it Euler angles. Well, what about quaternions? Are they continuous? I don't have enough brain cells to comprehend how quaternions work, but I searched it up on Google and someone said they're not continuous, so I'm just gonna take their word for it, I don't know. So yeah, instead we take the up vector and the forward vector of the object, and any combination of these two vectors is always gonna give us a unique rotation. It does mean that instead of three numbers for Euler rotations, or four numbers for quaternions, we need six numbers just for one rotation, but Better safe than sorry, I guess. Now, you'll notice here, instead of just the position of the Iron Man, we have relative positions to these three targets. We're only gonna use one of them, so we'll have 27 inputs and not 33. But basically, moving around this target is how we'll get it to fly around. So first, we have to make sure that it can at least hover around a fixed target. So we'll define the training reward system like this. For 20 seconds, every frame, the Iron Man will measure its distance from the target and then add a reward of negative that distance. So if it perfectly hovers at the target, by the end of the 20 seconds, it will have a reward of zero. Why am I only giving negative reward and not positive reward? Well, I guess I'm an Asian parent. Emotional All right, time to set up the training ground and run the machine learning. Hmm, what are we gonna get for the average reward? Like negative 5,000, negative 10,000, I'm guessing. Like, oh. Oh, well, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Okay, we're getting somewhere. The average reward is actually like pretty good now. It seems like they're pretty good at staying around a single point in space. Let's zoom in on one single example. Ooh, I don't know why it's spinning so much, but I'm not going to question it. Uh, yeah, well, then we can check off our first milestone, staying at point A. We're making progress. And then now we have to move on to our second milestone, which is moving from point A to point B. Now we change the training environment to be this whole area. And then every time the training restarts, the Iron Man's position gets reset and the target gets moved to a random new position. This way, it's incentivized to fly towards the target because then the distance is smaller and the reward that it gets won't be so negative. Well, let's have a guess. If we just use the current brain of the Iron Man that we've trained to hover around a single point, and then we put it into this new training situation where that point moves around different locations, is it gonna be able to adapt? Well, let's see. Nope, it cannot. Oh geez, it is really bad at this. Ah, oh, this learning is gonna take a while. You see, being an Asian parent's not that easy. We're back to like negative 500,000 reward. God damn it. All right, okay, it seems like the rewards are getting pretty good again now. Uh, let's see how it's doing. Oh hey, let's go, it's doing a thing, it's moving to the, to the target. And again. And again. And all right, yeah, this, this is actually pretty reliable. Oh, it failed one time, but uh, I'll let that slide. I do notice that whenever it starts above the target, it always dips down below it first and then comes back up, which is quite interesting. So we do have a third stage to the training process. Up till now, we've been resetting the Iron Man to the middle every time because it kept losing its balance and falling down into the void, so we had to reset it. But as it gets better at flying, I'm gonna stop resetting it so that it learns to deal with its existing momentum as it switches targets. So yeah, that's the third milestone. It's a relatively minor one. I don't even know if it's gonna make that big of a difference. Okay, the reward did dip a little bit as I added the change and then came back up, so I guess it helps a little bit. But yeah, it's time to let our AI fly a full path and see what it can do, so it's time for map design. And map design obviously just means going to the Unity Asset Store, clicking free, and then downloading a bunch of random models. 
So here's a relatively entertaining part of this whole process, just me dragging garbage mismatched assets around to hack together something that kind of resembles an obstacle course. Visually, I think this time lapse is kind of fun to watch, so I'll just take this as an opportunity to take a break from the actual topic of the video and go on a tangent. I mean, gosh, I guess the brain can only take so much neural network, machine learning, algorithm, training, reward system knowledge before it needs a break, huh? I'm trying to make this video longer, well, one for the ad revenue obviously, but also to fight against the shortening average attention span nowadays, basically ever since TikTok got popular. I mean, short videos are fine, but nothing pisses me off more than when they put a clip of like GTA 5 drifting on the bottom, or subway surfers, or I don't know, scraping paint from a bucket, or some other like slime montage just so people keep watching. Like if you've got some Joe Rogan highlight, that's cool, but I'm not a three-year-old, I don't need big colorful visual movement happening on half the screen to keep me entertained. I feel like this sort of practice in short form videos is literally accelerating the progress of humanity backwards. We're going backwards. We can't even look at a 10 second video without Minecraft parkour footage on it. Uh, yeah, anyways, rant over and time lapse over too. Now I'm gonna play footage of the AI flying and let me just preface this by saying, it's really bad at flying. It is so slow. When I first started on this video idea, I was expecting it to be able to zip around like in the movies, but now I'm just happy if it doesn't fall off the map. And it does fall off the map, that's the thing. Like, matter of fact, it's so bad at flying that afterwards I decided to train another agent, a quadcopter, to see if it can do any better. So yeah, stick around to the end to see how that compares, but I'll just let it play. I might speed up some of it so it doesn't take up an entire 10 minutes of the video, but here we go.
the heck retarded. Some girls are body body. I'm looking for a girl that will do whatever the fuck I say. Every day she be giving it up. Shake that ass for me. Shake that ass for me. Come on. So with that in mind, I had to think, is this Iron Man model just a terrible design for flying around? Would a quadcopter be any better? So I designed a quadcopter simulation and trained it the exact same way that I did for the Iron Man. Here's how that went. Well, it seems I'm just bad at reinforcement learning. But hey, I guess it's a learning experience. It feels like with each video I make, I try to tackle a new topic. And with each new topic, I just get barely good enough at it to scrape together a video. If I wanted to perfectly succeed at what I'm doing in each video, then I guess I'd have to upload once a year. So maybe that's reasonable. But anyway, AI is hard. I'll catch you in the next one.